Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, I stumbled across another really nice game actually between Leela, Chess Zero and Stockfish. Again, it was in the Alpha Zero simulation match. 10 minutes each on the clock with a five second increment. In this game though, Leela was playing with the white pieces, Stockfish was playing black. And this game was actually a Karo Can. So we'll get the opening moves out of the way first. E4, C6 was played, D4, D5, Knight C3, takes on E4, Knight takes e4, knight to f6, and there was a trade. And in this position, g takes f6 was played. Now, I don't think that's what the usual move is. I think it's usually e takes f6, but the book move uh, was g takes in this instance. So we get into a uh, caro can where white's traded on f6, and we'll see what Leela plays as the next move. And I thought it was just rather interesting. So the first move she plays is c3, makes a lot of sense. It connects uh, the pawn on c3 to d4. Got a very solid center. And um, basically also white may be able to get the queen out at some point to a4. The bishop can come to c4 for instance. And white's got a very pleasant position. But we'll see how white plays this. So Stockfish went in for the center as well and played e5, which makes a lot of sense. So why is e5 so good here? Well, it's because if white takes on e5 with pawn takes, then black can trade queens, king takes, and black can undouble their pawns with f takes e5. And it's actually an even game now, and uh, chances for both sides. Go back to the game then. After e5, Leela played knight to f3, which makes a lot of sense. Again, supports and reinforces this d4 pawn. And both sides just develop quickly now. Stockfish developed the bishop. Leela does likewise, bishop to d3. Stockfish develops a knight, Lila Castle's king side, and now there's queen c7, and pawn takes e5. So this allows black to undouble the pawns. However, this is a demonstration of Lila's genius and how far she's come and in defeating Stockfish. Now granted this is a blitz match, but still this is actually quite uh, interesting, as we'll see. So knight takes e5 is played. Knight takes e5, and black undoubles the pawns. F takes e5, and we think to ourselves, why has Leela done this? Because it's now just equalized for black. However, she plays a very nice move. Queen to h5, so straight away gets some more development, and has an initiative, and gets really active with the queen. So in the game, Stockfish now played bishop to g7. Leela played bishop to e3. Stockfish castle queenside hits the bishop on d3 and Leela protects with rook f to d1 and Stockfish hides the king in the corner, king to b8. And again it looks like an equal position but black's got tremendous weaknesses now as we'll see and find out. Leela played bishop to f5 threatening to take on e6 and double black's pawn structure. First off though Stockfish traded a pair of rooks, rooks takes d1. Lila recaptured, and queen c8 was played to reinforce the bishop on e6. But now Lila comes up with an incredibly clever move. I think most of us here would play bishop takes e6, and trade a pair of bishops perhaps, uh, but white can actually win a pawn here. And Lila's genius move, I think anyway, is queen g5. So what does this do? Well it hits the bishop on g7, forces black to make some sort of concession here. First up, let's look at rook g8. So what happens if Stockfish plays this move? Well, if rook g8, there's bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, and white can play rook to d8 with check, forcing black to take. And after queen captures, there's queen c8, and bishop takes a7. And this is the point it wins the queen, because after king takes a7, there's queen takes queen, and white's in a one position. So we can't play rook g8 in this position, also, I looked at bishop h6. This is quite a sneaky move, um, because after bishop takes e6, for instance, black could play bishop takes g5. However, again, this works in white's favour, because after bishop takes queen, bishop takes bishop, there comes bishop takes b7. Uh, the point being is that white is attacking this bishop, so if the king takes on b7, white can just recapture on e3. So it makes sense for black to take on f2 first with check, King takes f2, king takes b7, uh, but the point is at the end of it there's rook d7 check and white will pick up another free pawn. So queen g5 is an excellent move. 
Also, if black retreats the bishop backwards, again, white just gains some great compensation with moves like queen to f6 coming in. So in the game, Stockfish is forced to give up a pawn here, plays bishop takes f5. And after queen takes g7, there's a trade of bishops. Both sides have opposite colored bishops, but all of a sudden black's losing a pawn because the pawn on e5 is attacked and the pawn on f7 is attacked. And there's no way to defend both. The only way to defend both is queen e6, but if this move then queen takes rook can be played. In the game, Stockfish played rook to e8, protects the e5 pawn, and Lula wins a pawn. Queen takes f7, queen e6 is played, and there's a trade of queens. b3 is played to stop uh, the a2 pawn being attacked, b6, and bishop g5. So here we've got a pawn up for white. It's opposite colored bishops though, and it's going to be a very tricky endgame, you'd think. So let's see how Leela converts this game. So first, king c7, bishop f6, hits the e5 pawn. And I should spoil it, actually, this is the point. Black's got tremendously weak e pawn, and Leela just absolutely exploits this in the game, as we'll see. So bishop f7 was played, g4 gives the king some space, c5 was played, and now rook to e1. The point is, bishop and rook attacking this e5 pawn. The king protects it with d6. Leela gets their own king up, king g2, b5 is played, and now Leela plays b4. A very interesting move. Um, a good point though is if bishop takes a2, white gets a good game here with the move f4. The point is the pawn on e5 is pinned by this rook on e1. So if black pushes it up, then white can play bishop e5 check, king d5, and after rook a1, Bishop c4 and king f2. Uh, White's got a very nice position. There could be a trade. Pawn takes b4, pawn takes b4, rook e7, and just h4. So these pawns are rolling up the board. And the king will probably come to e3 for White. And it's very comfortable, even though White has given up a pawn in that variation. So after b4, though, Stockfish played the move a5. a3 was played. Rook to e6 to hit the bishop. And now comes a nice move. Pawn takes c5 with check. And if the king takes, then comes bishop takes e5. And it's just a one pawn for white. And white should be able to convert this game. So in the actual game, king d5 was now played. Protecting e5. And the threat of rook takes f6 is still on the cards. Uh, but Leela plays a nice move. Bishop d8 hits the pawn. a4 is played. Bishop c7, hitting the e5 pawn again, stopping the king on d5 from moving away. e4 was played, and now it's bishop to d6. So this pawn protects the bishop, and essentially now white is just uh, two pawns up in the end game. So slowly, um, white's increasing their advantage. However, Stockfish just played king c4 to try and win a pawn back with the king takes c3. But this allows white to get the king into a nice position. So king g3 is played, Stockfish takes... King f4, attacking e4, and if king d4 here, this doesn't work due to rook to d1, the king is forced away, and actually in this position white could just play c6 and try and run this pawn to get a queen. So in, after king f4, king c4 was played by a stockfish, allows white to win the pawn back, rook takes e4, with check, the king went to d5, and now there's a trade, bishop takes, and now h4. And after several more moves in this position, white just moves the pawns up the board. Stockfish tries b4, but white can take, and after a3. Luckily, we see here that the pawn is running to a dark square, and luckily, white actually has a dark squared bishop, so just plays bishop to e5. There's no chance of black getting a queen, because the bishop covers the square. And after a2, Lila plays bishop to a1. And after several more moves, eventually, White just pushes the pawns up the board and converts the game and gets a queen. And I really like Lila's play here because in the past, actually, she just started uh, shuffling around in these sort of end games. But nowadays, she just seems to go straight in for the kill. So bishop c3, king to a3, queen to b5, and queen b2 is checkmate. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that game because I thought it was a very nice genius play from Lila. I especially like this queen g5 move in the game, which just wins a pawn. And um, yeah, it's just quite silent but deadly. Um, it was a very nice finish. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my analysis of this game. See you next time for more chess videos. And if you haven't already, please do like, comment and subscribe.